All right, uh, this is Cole Claiborne here with the Courier and Press. Uh, we're live with Kyle Couric, uh, former Memorial High School basketball and Louisville basketball standout, who is now playing professionally in Spain. Uh, Kyle's had a, a pretty eventful last couple of months. Um, I guess, Kyle, kind of in your own words, uh, for those who don't know maybe what's what's happened to you, kind of just give a brief synopsis of, of what all you've been going through. Uh, well, uh, early – Early November now, I uh, started out having a little headache and um, didn't play in a game, didn't think much of it. Thought it was a migraine, went for a scan. Uh, found out it was a grade one meningioma. Uh, thankfully, it was benign. Uh, went through three brain surgeries to get it removed and to get everything healed back up. Um, and pretty much now, just on the road to recovery. When, when they told you that you were going to need brain surgery, and uh, you know, obviously knowing the risks that go involved with that because your dad's obviously a brain surgeon so you've been around this for for your whole life what was going through your head I mean were you scared at all or, or were you confident that everything would, would turn out well uh, I really can't explain it. it I wasn't I was I mean for the circumstances I was really calm I wasn't scared or afraid really at all for myself I mean I was a little afraid from you know my wife and two kids and family um, but I had confidence in the doctors and nurses and every place and every person at the hospital where I was um, and I just kind of, I knew everything was going to be fine. Everything was going to be all right. You know, on, on our end, we were, we were following your, your family's posts on Facebook and social media throughout that whole ordeal. And uh, it seemed like everybody really spoke a lot about the moment that you finally woke up and that they saw your smile for the first time. And for them, that was obviously a very special moment. Maybe from, from your end, when, when you finally woke up, I guess, what was going through your head? I mean, did you have any idea of maybe like what had happened? Because obviously you were, in a medically induced coma, but you know, what did you remember and maybe what were your thoughts when you finally woke up? I don't, I don't really remember much at all. I remember the first surgery a little bit, um, but then everything kind of went downhill and then the second surgery, everything was, I mean, everything kind of went wrong. And then, you know, the doctor here, Dr. Plunz did what he needed to do and things kind of started turning around a little bit. But, um, I mean, I, I woke up, I had no idea I was in a coma. I had no idea what happened. Uh, I thought, you know, I'd, it was like a couple of days later. I had no idea. Uh, I just kind of remember waking up and my family being there. Um, my father-in-law was there, and I just remember, you know, laughing around and kind of joking with them a little bit. And, uh, I mean, it was kind of an emotional moment for, for them. Your wife put out a pretty heartfelt Facebook post that was just a really long, in-depth kind of description of the feelings that she went through and. You know, she didn't really hold back any emotion. I mean, she said that she was so scared that that she she felt like she wanted to die at one point. I mean, just now that you guys are back together as a family, and especially around the holidays, um, I don't know. Does it does it kind of add a, a special sense of uh, togetherness now that you're back and you're healthy and you're on the road to recovery, and she knows that you're going to be okay? Yeah, I mean, we're you know, she's a special person, and we have a really close connection. Um, I think more than just a normal husband and wife do, but. Of course, it adds something else to it. Uh, I mean, how quickly everything turned and how things could have changed, you know, in a two-day period uh, is, is kind of scary. Um, so the fact that everything went well and now we're about to you know, celebrate Christmas tomorrow for the first time as a, as a real big family with our two kids, uh, it's, it's something more special. I mean, you've been playing basketball your whole life, and for you to be out this long, I feel like it's probably – got to be eating at you I mean just how hard is it to, to have to sit and watch and not not be able to play not be able to help your teammates oh it's it's extremely hard uh, I mean the longest I've been away was I took 10 days off last year and that's the longest I can ever remember taking off uh, so now you know I, I've touched the ball one time since you know almost two months now uh, so it's, it's really hard to do but you gotta look at the positive side of it I get to spend more time with my kids and my family um, and that's, you know, time you really can't get back. But, I mean, now I'll get back when I'm ready. I'm not in a rush. It's, it's a long process, and we're, we're starting completely over. I just got to be patient and take things slow. Yeah, that actually was my next question was sort of what the road to recovery looks like for you. I mean, um, what, what all have you done in terms of rehab so far, and, and what more do you have to go? Or what, what more do you have to do before you can uh, start remaining uh, returning to basketball activity? Yes. Something that um, you know, we've talked about a lot with doctors from Barcelona, uh, my trainers here in Gran Canaria, um, they don't really know exactly where, where to start and what to do because there hasn't been a basketball player that's gone through this. So pretty much we're starting completely over. Um, the first thing I was, I was doing was you know, standing up and then walking. Um, now actually 
we're just kind of walking in the pool, doing a lot of balance work, um, just warm up biking and elliptical, and that's that's it. Uh, so maybe in a couple more days, I'll be able to swim. Maybe in a week or two, I'll be able to run and slowly start to build up and, you know, get my body ready. Um, at, at the point that I remember, I lost um, about 14 pounds, but uh, it was it was probably a lot more before that, and I just don't know it. So a lot of muscle was lost, and we have to get it all back without, you know, doing it the right way. Yeah, that actually was my, my question. It, it looked like you, you know, might have lost some – some strength. I mean, how much of that is weight training? When will when will you start um, kind of putting more to it you know, in terms of your weight training? I mean, obviously you're probably taking it easy right now. I guess when is the next level of effort uh, start to come in for for rehab for you to be able to gain that muscle back? Uh, I think I think we're still a while, uh, quite a ways away from lifting or gaining the weight back. Um, now I'm just trying to get my body right, eating well, uh, and try and gain the muscle that I can just by you know walking and balancing and doing some stretching. Um, I think maybe we'll start taking things up in maybe a week or two. Um, hopefully I, I just want to start jogging now and, you know, maybe jumping or shooting. Uh, but it'll take time and I'm, I have a lot of faith in, uh, in my trainers right now. And I listen to them and they're, uh, they know what's best. I mean, th th this sounds like it is going to be a long recovery. I mean, for some athletes that could be discouraging, but it sounds like you've got kind of the right mindset on it. I mean, you kind of talked about just how, you know it's going to be a long recovery. Is that just sort of the approach that you kind of have to take in this sort of scenario to know that it's not something that you can that you can get back to overnight? Exactly. Uh, I mean, if, if I'm trying to get back by, you know, mid-January, I'll drive myself crazy. Um, and if you push yourself too hard, and instead of getting better, you'll end up hurting, you know, another part of your body, and then you're out even longer. you got to recover that and then recover from the surgery. So I'm just, you know, taking it, you know, day at a time right now the trainer that we have here is you know very very good uh i trust what he has to say and trying to you know enjoy the process and just improve my body and get ready you were having a pretty good season there uh before all this happened and, and obviously everybody here knows your career at memorial high school and your career at louisville um i mean are, are you are you confident that you'll be able to to return to somewhat of your capabilities that you had before this happened or is there sort of a fear from the doctors and those around you that that maybe you may not get to that that full strength that you were at before this all happened um the, the doctor uh that did the surgery said he's expecting a full recovery uh, i think the same thing um uh, i think you know at least the level i was playing at and because of how we're doing all the recovery now maybe even stronger and better do you have i mean do you have any sort of idea when you might be able to play in a game again or is that just so far out of the distance that you're not even worried about that uh we try not to put a date on it just you know to keep my mind focused on what we're doing now uh i'm hoping you know late february maybe early march um that's kind of where i have my realistic mindset um I'm, uh, of course i'm hoping sooner right because I, I remember when i talked to you before you mentioned that maybe january was when you were wanting to get back on the basketball court and i guess that's obviously got to be just getting your feet wet again i guess i mean is, is it just going to be almost like you gotta go out and you just gotta shoot free throws again and you better shoot jump shots again and just kind of get back into it slowly is that kind of what the process is going to look like for you well the first day i shot i was you know i was right around the little charge circle and that was that was the distance i shot um so i said january just because that's when i'll step on the court not playing maybe it's you know doing a little jumping or running and shooting mid-range shots and then you know progressing from there uh, then the next step would be just doing shooting workouts and ball hunting workouts on my own. Uh, and then from there, practice, and then even longer, you know, finally uh, getting back into a game. And uh, your your team released a video the other day. You got to walk out onto the court and greet the fans, and they got to see you, and they chanted MVP for you. And just what was that moment like to finally be back with your teammates and with your fans and, and just kind of get that reception from them? Uh, it, was, it was just unbelievable, incredible. Um, I wasn't expecting anything like that. Uh, I mean, the fans we have here are, are really unbelievable. The support they've given me is incredible. Uh, I can't thank them enough. And it was it was pretty amazing to get back on the court with them and be in front of the fans and, and watch a game and being part of a great win that we had. And would you be able to join them on the sidelines as much as you can for the rest of the season? Or, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't imagine that you would travel with them, but maybe you would. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet. Um, Definitely not traveling with them now, uh, just because I have to stay here and keep them keep uh, up with my recovery. But of course, I'll be there every home game. Uh, I'm pretty much there for every practice, uh, 
and then when I get closer to playing, I think I'll start traveling with them just to, you know, get traveling again and stay on the road and be with the team then. Probably, I mean, just for your own peace of mind, I mean, does it help to kind of just be back in somewhat of a normal regimen? Because you were bedridden for, for quite a while. And finally, I guess I would imagine just to be out and be back on the basketball court. I mean, is that just talk about maybe how that's kind of affected just your, your psyche and everything? Uh, it, the ICU in the hospital is extremely difficult. They wouldn't, uh, I mean, they limited my range of motion pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely. It, I, I could barely, I, they wouldn't let me stand up for, for 10 days and then they wouldn't let me I, I walk around the hall. They wouldn't let me downstairs. Uh, so it was hard to kind of, you know, get back to my normal life. So it was, I was really excited. To kinda, the doctor let me leave about a week early to come back to Grand Canaria just to, you know, be back in our apartment, get back to our normal life, you know, eating everything we do normal here. And, and then of course, you know, going back and being with the team, all that helps in recovery and it's just mentally, it helps a lot. Well, great. Well, Kyle, thanks so much for joining me here. And, uh, you know, obviously we, we wish you the best of luck in your recovery and hopefully we can see you back on the court, uh, you know, somewhat soon. And, uh, just thank you so much for the time here and, uh, best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.